I can't believe I'm doing this. Be just careful. This is the African honeybee. It's small but mighty, and it might be able to help us protect the largest animal walking the face of the earth today, the endangered African savanna elephant. Using a fascinating fact about elephants that few people know about, we're teaming up with a frontline elephant protection group in Tanzania to safeguard these majestic creatures and make our friend Phil face one of his biggest fears. Oh God. We are Planet Wild, welcome to Mission 10. This is the Ngorogoro Crater in Tanzania, one of the most beautiful and biodiverse places on Earth. Once a massive volcano, it now hosts Africa's densest mammalian population, is part of the spectacular Serengeti ecosystem, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and together with the wider protection area, home to over 1,000 African savanna elephants, the largest animals walking the face of the Earth today. Now, what's special about elephants in Tanzania is that it's one of the few remaining places on Earth where they can still freely roam without being restricted by borders or fences. And without them doing that, the Serengeti ecosystem wouldn't be the wildlife hotspot it is today. That's because elephants are what's called a keystone species. It means they literally shape the landscape around them in ways that allow other animals to flourish. For example, with their huge appetite for shrubs and bushes, elephants keep the savanna open, which is vital for zebras and other plains animals to thrive. When all that food is digested, their dung literally plants thousands of seeds across wide areas. And during the dry season, they use their tusks to dig watering holes that many animals can drink from. Unfortunately, there is no guarantee that it will always be this way. Because the African elephant is under threat of extinction, as their numbers in Tanzania have declined by almost 90% within a 40-year time frame. To find out what the biggest threat to their survival is today, why there is hope, and how this little friend could be the solution to protecting these majestic creatures, we sent Phil from Planet Wild to the Ngorogoro crater. You're looking into my tired eyes right now because I got up very early, but I'm at the same time very excited. I never saw any wild elephants before in my life, so hopefully today is the first time. There's an elephant. Yes. The first elephant we see, there's a solitary bull. While I was researching for this video, I've actually completely fell in love with elephants. Elephants are in many ways even more fascinating than most people think. Did you know that their trampling is so earth-shattering that it creates underground sound waves which can travel for dozens of kilometers? Elephants actually use this to send seismic signals to each other, basically communicating through little earthquakes. And they receive these signals from far away and can listen to these sounds with their sensitive feet showing that elephants are in many ways more delicate beings than they might first appear. And only a few decades ago, there used to be much more of them. At the end of the 70s, over 300,000 elephants called Tanzania their home. By 2014, that number had shrunk to only 40,000, an existential decline. And even though the numbers have since recovered a bit thanks to anti-poaching policies, the remaining elephants still face a substantial threat. And that's because of human-elephant conflict around land use. Tanzania's population is growing and climate change has made entire areas of land unusable. In a search for new agricultural land, farms have extended into the habitat of elephants and their migratory routes, as we learned from Masaka from our partner organization Wild Survivors, who are working to protect the remaining elephants in the Ngorogoro region. Many people have invaded wild places, hence entering in competition of space between humans and elephants. And that can be pretty dangerous, because an elephant bull can be up to 4 meters or 13 feet high, 7 meters or 23 feet long, and can weigh up to 10 tons. That's basically a truck. And therefore, conflicts can quickly get out of hand. It's important to understand that due to their massive size, elephants spend basically their whole day eating, and they will eat everything that stands in their way leaves, fruits, roots and grasses. A field of crops like this one, with pigeon peas for example, will be consumed in no time, especially because it's like candy for them. So they might even trample down some human construction on their path. This can mean a huge, even existential loss for farmers. One of these farmers is Sakaria, who lives next to the elephant forest in the Ngorogoro crater area. <laughs> Sina nempaka 
Other tactics to chase elephants away include flashlights and loud noises. But all this is a dangerous endeavor for farmers. If an elephant has had a traumatizing experience with humans before, for example because of ivory poaching, it can react aggressively. And sadly, this has led to casualties on both sides in the past. And this makes the situation in Tanzania much harder to solve compared to any human-wildlife conflict in our previous missions. But Masaka's team has come up with a brilliant nature-based solution to mitigate the tension. And all of that is based on one amazing fact. Elephants are afraid of bees. That's right. The largest land animal on our Earth is afraid of one of the smallest. You might have heard that elephants are afraid of mice, but that's more of an urban legend. But they are actually afraid of this little insect here. Because even though elephants have extremely thick skin, they still have very sensitive areas. Their mouth, their ears and the inside of their trunk can hurt a lot if they get stung. And because East African honeybees have so many predators, they evolve to be very aggressive if need be. And then even an elephant gets nervous. And this brings me here, to the village of Apakiteti, just east of the Angorogoro crater. The village's farmland borders a narrow elephant corridor from two sides, where at any given time up to a hundred elephants are passing through to get from the forest at the edge of the crater to a salt lake at the other side of the corridor. Under these geographical conditions, human-elephant conflicts are inevitable. To avoid these conflicts in the future, wild survivors came up with a brilliant idea. What if we created a fence made of beehives to gently guide elephants away from human fields and settlements? That's exactly what they started doing. And the crazy thing, it actually worked. In case you were wondering what Planet Wild is about, here's a quick explanation why that yellow bar below is running through. Planet Wild is a new initiative that anyone can join who wants to help restore our planet through monthly missions like this one. In our next one, we are saving turtles with the help of dogs. If you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. If you want these missions to become bigger, consider joining Planet Wild as a backer. There's a link in the description. There will also be more info at the end, but now back to the video. So, how does a beehive fence work? At the end of the farmland, right where it borders the elephant corridor, wild survivors have installed over a hundred beehives, all connected through a wire. If an elephant tries to cross, it touches the wire, which will shake up the beehives and alert the bees, making them buzz around and leaving the elephant with only one option, abort the mission. So we are basically using bees to save elephants and also to protect the farmers' crops. And this simple idea has proven to be incredibly effective. Along the current implementation area, wild survivors have been able to reduce the number of human-elephant conflicts from 63 to only 5 incidents per month. An amazing success. And all of that with a concept that is minimally intrusive as it still allows other species to pass. An incredible example of how nature itself often holds the solutions to the problems we need to solve to protect it. And of course, we wanted to help this project become bigger. And that's why the Planet Y community is financing two kilometers of new beehive fence to further extend the elephant protection line. Let's set the first one up. At the beginning, the hives are still empty. That's because we're not actually releasing human-bred bee colonies into the wild. Instead, the hives will be taken on by wild honeybees. I want to show you how that looks. But for that, we have to open one of the boxes, making thousands of bees swarm out. And that's the part I'm incredibly afraid of, because I'm super scared of bees. Oh god. The only advice that I want to give you before reaching to the beehive is just let us be just careful. You know, we have the, the zooming sound and also the a single bee sound. Yeah. So both sounds normally scare, the, scare away the elephants. Oh God. I feel I want you to hold this. Oh God. It is an insane feeling to have thousands of bees buzzing around you. I don't know if my heart was ever pumping that fast. But with time, I became calm and actually enjoyed the presence of the bees. And it made me appreciate them. Our planet wouldn't look the same without their relentless work. 
through their pollination services, they are literally fueling the entire food chain from the ground up. And now they are even saving elephants. It actually wasn't that scary as I thought. I mean, I'm full of adrenaline right now. Yeah. <laughs> but I did it. For this mission, we have decided to do something very special. You can now add 100 bees to the fence by leaving a comment below before the end of January. We will then go and set up the corresponding number of beehives on top of what we have already done. So go hit the comment section and let's see how many additional beehives we can install together and further increase protection for the savannah elephants. What makes all of this even more genius? is that this fence doesn't just protect both farmers and elephants, it also provides a stable income to a local women's collective that has started to build a honey processing and distribution operation, empowering women entrepreneurship that in turn can help to make bee fencing a growing success. And to help bring this final building block to fruition, we are bringing even more support. Therefore, the Planet Wild community is sponsoring two beekeeping and enterprise trainings for the women collective in this area to close the loop on the holistic design of this project and create a true win-win-win outcome. With the additional beehives funded, we are helping to rapidly expand the nature-based protection of over 1,000 elephants traversing regularly through the Upper Kaiteri Wildlife Corridor all while saving dozens of farmers' crops and thereby livelihoods and empowering women entrepreneurship in the region. This mission is an amazing reminder of how thinking out of the box can hold the key to many of the environmental problems we face today. The Beehive Fence of Tanzania is a beautiful and buzzing example of that. And I'm happy that our side quest of an exposure therapy for Phil's biggest fear was successful as well. You too can make our planet a little wilder by joining Planet Wild as a backer. Together we can protect endangered species, clean up our oceans and rewild entire landscapes. As a member you get to vote on how we spend the money, connect with me and others on our Discord and see your own impact in the Planet Wild app. So make sure to sign up today, there's a link in the description. And of course, a big thank you goes out to all our existing Planet Wild members for making any of this possible. You have just unlocked the new elephant badge in our app. Well deserved. If you want to watch some more, go check out our two previous missions over here or down here. All right, that's it from my side. See you all again next month, over and out.